big part of the GM's job is finding the right coach for the team. And we've seen a few mm -hmm. coaching moves over the recent weeks and so in the NBA. And I wanted to get some of your thoughts on them. So let's start with the one okay. that everyone's talking about. The Lakers ended up not going with Dan Hur Hurley. They've gone with J.J. Reddick, who will be the new head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. Scott, what was your immediate reaction upon hearing this? Well, first of all, let me issue a public congratulations to J.J. Reddick. Um, happy for him. Uh, what an awesome opportunity for him to go to one of the most iconic franchises in the NBA uh, and this being his first coaching job. Now, I worked with J.J. Redick. I was a front office executive in Orlando, so I got to know J.J. some uh, there. Uh, very bright about the game of basketball. Very, he was a cerebral player. Um, so I'm not surprised that this is something that he's wanted to do as coach. Uh, the big question in this that he's going to have to answer is, as a first-time coach and hasn't done this before, how is he going to lead and manage men? I don't have any question that he understands the game, he sees the game, uh, he can impart uh, his knowledge, game plans, all those things. But the biggest part, through my experiences over the years, and I'm a former coach as well, is how you galvanize, manage, and lead men. And that's all 15 of them. Now, it's known that he has a relationship with LeBron James. You know, that's going to be important to have uh, the buy-in from your top players being LeBron and Anthony Davis. But there's 13 other guys as well. Uh, you got to get them to buy in as well. Now, it's... <laughs> LeBron and AD can help in the beginning with that, but that's something he's got to sustain. And he knows that coming into the door. I think JJ realizes that as a former player, he knows that he's never done this before, but there have been guys that have um, gone down this path, former players with no coaching experience, and some have had good success. I mean, you know, we, you can go back to, you know, Mark Jackson, Doc Rivers. Um, Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr, uh, you know, done good jobs. Didn't go quite as well for a um, Steve Nash, but uh, but again, the precedents have been there. Uh, the difference in him taking over the Lakers' job as opposed to some of those other jobs as first-time head coaches is all the external noise and the expectations that come with that job, regardless of what we say here. Because he's with the Lakers, and if LeBron James is back there and Anthony Davis is back there, there's going to be an expectation that they win big and challenge in the in the Western Conference to be one of the top teams. But you and I know, Mo, currently constructed, this roster is not good enough to be there. They've, they've shown you that. So we'll so, see. Yeah, to, to address some of the things you said, I think getting the buy-in from the team – I think because you have LeBron James, who's such a unique player on your roster now with so much experience and the players all look up to him on that roster. And I think if he gives the cosign to JJ Redick, which he has already done through his podcast, um, then I think the rest of the roster will follow. Anthony Davis is an intriguing one, though, because JJ Redick didn't have him on his all NBA defensive ballots. So he didn't consider Anthony Davis one of the top 10 defensive players in the NBA last season, which I thought was an interesting thing to know. I'll see how Anthony Davis reacts to that, um, mm -hmm. whether he can match that. I think the big thing, though, for a first-time coach coming in is assembling the right assistants. You know, there's rumors about mm -hmm. Rajon Rondo or JJ's former coach um, Van Gundy as well coming in and being assistants there. And I think having that leadership and experience of the assistant coaches as well can be crucial to the, him doing his job correctly because a, a lot of people don't understand how much of an impact the defensive coordinator, the offensive coordinator, the guys who work individually with the players, they all have on the team. And the one thing I'll say about coaching, Scott, I don't know. Do you watch Game of Thrones? I do not, Mo. Oh, I've heard Scott, a lot about it. I'm not, I, 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 this I've is the off-season. It's the off-season. You've exactly. got to watch Game of Thrones, right? First of all, you've got to watch that. I've been watching House of Dragon, the sequel. I watched it last night. Uh, okay. But coaching in the NBA... Mm -hmm. I can't say too much about this publicly, but it's a lot like Game of Thrones because okay. there are a lot of teams in the NBA, and I'm sure you're aware of this, whether you want to comment on it or not, where 
There's assistant coaches who are kind of plotting on the downfall of the head coach so, that, so they can take his spot. And you saw even how this played out with Dan Hurley and JJ Reddick, the way that they position themselves and leverage organizations and whatnot to get to where they are. Um, it's a, it's a cutthroat business being a coach in the NBA. It's not all sunshine and rainbow. So I think getting the right team around JJ coaching wise that not only have experience, but that he can trust because the worst thing for JJ mm -hmm. would be to have an assistant coach who's probably got a better CV coaching wise than he does, who's secretly plotting. All right, cool. Let's give JJ a little run. If it all goes yeah. wrong by the trade deadline, they might just get rid of him. <laughs> right. No more. You, <clears throat> that keyword trust it's huge when you're formulating the staff um, and JJ is going to need people around him that he can trust to your point that are going to be giving him the suggestions because ultimately he's the decision maker. But as an assistant, you give suggestions about what you see, what you know, what's going on. That's going to be helpful uh, to the team at large. So he's got to have a group, uh, an experienced group around him will be very important. Uh, a selfless group, uh, this understands that, look, we're here for the betterment of J.J. Reddick as the head coach and the Los Angeles Lakers as a whole. And so that's going to be important in putting that staff together because it is a long, arduous road. And, look, I've been an assistant and a head coach, and it's easy to go home at night as an assistant coach and say, oh, I would have done this, I would have done that. When you move over those six inches to become a head coach, that's an entirely different world. Uh, and JJ is got to is going to have to find in this first year what is going to be kind of his rhythm, his style and approach in the locker room, in practices, when they travel. I mean, all of that now falls on you as a head coach. He's observed that as a player, and he's observed him as a far you know from afar as a TV analyst. But now to be the guy who is responsible for all of that, you know, you've got to every step of the way. And he's a tremendous, uh, tremendously hard worker. So he will figure it out, but you're going to have to give him time. And one thing, if I could give him one suggestion uh, as a head coach, so the, the ability to communicate is huge. That it starts there. Can, not only with your players, but with your, your coaches as well. But if and when you make a mistake, because that's going to happen, how you own that situation and that mistake is going to be key for his longevity. You know, is he going to be the coach that said, look, guys, that one tonight was on me. I should have made this adjustment, that adjustment. I own that. I'm going to be better next time. When you're able to do that and have that security in yourself, number one, and in your position, number two, to do that, I have seen buy-in be that greater and that deeper from players when I've been around coaches who have done that. I think the thing that's interesting to me now, a lot of people are out here saying that Dan Hurley used this Lakers position to leverage UConn and to give him more money. I think I don't really do the, the per sources reporting that certain people out there do. But what I will say on this is, it was very much realistic that Dan Hurley was joining the Los Angeles Lakers. I don't think the final figure they offered him was what he was looking for when they were having those negotiations. But I think the more important part and the more interesting part now is having control of those decisions at a personnel level in terms of the roster of players that you have. I think Dan Hurley, with all of his experience, would have wanted to have more of an input and sway into the front office than a first-time head coach, J.J. Redick. So it's going to be interesting to me to see what Rob Palinka does and how much of an input J.J. Redick can have in these front office decisions in terms of who you draft, who you sign, who you trade for, because that, in my opinion, is more important for this Lakers team than whoever's coaching the roster, right? Because if they bring back the same team that they've had, it's going to be the same result. They've been, with the exception of the bubble, they've really just been a playing team the whole time LeBron has been there. And, you know, they had a good run to the Western Conference Finals just over a year ago. And that was great, okay? There was there was a lot of things that happened to make that run possible. For any run, you've got to have the things fall in order, a little bit of luck right. here and there. However, if they don't make some serious roster upgrades, then I don't think it matters who the coach is for the Lakers. Oh, no, I agree uh, wholeheartedly. Uh and there's an old uh, saying I used to hear in football. Uh, 
it's not the X's and O's, it's the Jimmy and Joe's that make the difference. <laughs> <laughs> and that is so true. And the Lakers obviously need an upgrade uh, on the ability to, to defend from the perimeter. They also need some shooting on the perimeter to help open the floor up more and give outlets for both LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And J.J. Redick, as a former big-time elite three-point shooter himself, recognizes the importance of that. I am sure that through, during their conversations, during this interview process, Rob Palenka gave his assessment of what he thought the roster was right now, what he felt needed to be improved. And I'm sure that J.J. Reddick in his conversations back, his retorts back to um, Rob Palenka, this is how I'm going to want to play the game. These are the kind of players I think can help us play this particular way. So while he may not have, JJ may not have a uh, final say on the personnel, it's always important that you understand from an executive side, who your coach is, how he wants to play. And you try to match as best you can available players that you want to bring into your to roster to fit the way you ultimately want to uh, play on the court. So we'll see how it all unfolds. This is their first time together too. This is JJ's first draft. Um, what he think he, what he thinks he may need or want right now could change and evolve as the season goes on, because mm -hmm. he really, this is, again, he's starting from ground zero in this capacity. Do you know what I think? What I think would be cool is if he coaches that summer league team, just to get a little bit of experience and I think that's, I, and I've seen that the first time head coaches lot, do that. But, yes, but, yeah, I you think, but I've seen it though. And I, uh, it, it would be a smart move on his part to do yeah. that just to get, again, like I said earlier, to get his voice, to get a feel, just, you know, to stand up, interact with the referees. Again, even though it's summer league, it's not a regular season game. It's still a great dress rehearsal and practice. And I wouldn't be surprised to, to uh, see him do that in some uh this summer you see that jj reddick's opened the pipeline for podcasters to become coaches moments <laughs> you're going to open the pipeline for podcasters to become front office executives uh, they, and we're going to keep it moving go. 